Today we're gonna work on a beautiful sunny village scene. <laughs> What's up friends, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. Today I want to show you the full process of drawing plus painting of a beautiful sunny uh, village scene. We're going to do it from start to finish. I played around with the recording angles uh, just to make it a little more interesting for you. Um, I had a very interesting day just to, to tell you a bit more. I uh, spent the entire morning working on commission and uh, commission work and then I finally had some time uh, to, to go to watercolors and really uh, just do my thing, the thing I really love the most. Uh, so anyway, let's get into the drawing and painting process. I record, uh, I've recorded this after the fact, so you actually have the entire process time lapsed, and I will give my commentary on what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and uh, so on. So I'm starting with just a sketch, and the first thing I put in is the horizon line, which is the one major shape that divides the earth and the sky. And now I'm trying to build up the perspective and hopefully you can uh, make up, make out what I'm doing here. Um, I changed the angle a bit <laughs> because uh, it was just more comfortable to record that way. Um, so maybe tilt your head a bit and I'll try to get a better angle the next time. So uh, there are two diagonal lines. One on the right is very subtle and the other one on the left is more obvious and they both converge somewhere along the horizon line and I'm just dropping in these uh, little houses, uh, structures here um, and trying to get it to uh, be congruent with the perspective so the roofs uh, reach about that uh, diagonal line on the left that's like their, their highest point um, adding a bit of the foliage here, some uh, trees and bushes uh, that are in the picture as well and this is where you want to be careful because there's a lot of uh, in the buildings there's a lot of small details uh, that you want to make sure you foreshorten correctly like these sides of the walls of the houses they're really squeezed due to the angle uh, so you want to make sure you get all those as accurately as possible it will have a huge impact on how realistic the final uh, result is okay and uh, I'm working on the right side here and the the perspective on the right side was much more challenging let me tell you because um, the the angle of the of the uh, diagonal line is so much more subtle and this is what I find tends to be the hardest perspectives um, you can see that the the back side of the rooftops uh, is lower hanging lower than the right side the one that's closer to us and it's just really not skewed but uh, it's really an extreme perspective and so you really want to make sure you get those uh, tough ones correctly uh, but it's really a matter of, of doing you know um, I've been talking quite a bit uh, lately about the fact that I'm really good in perceiving buildings and how to uh, draw them and uh, this is a good example and I don't think everyone is necessarily built for that specifically but for example I'm really bad with characters right now because it's not something I worked on or people or even animals it's something I'll need to put more effort into so buildings and things of that nature come more easily to me uh, so just add the shadows, the windows, all of the different details uh, that will get this one ready for uh, painting you want to get as many details as possible but uh, that are necessary okay uh, but not too much because then it will confuse you so now starting with the initial wash and I decided to sort of uh, end it at the roofs not go over them because I don't want too much wet and wet but I will allow the roofs to blend into the sky uh, if there's one thing I would do a little differently aside from the color of the skies it could have been a little more uh, cerulean like and I chose French Ultramarine, is that I would keep its value a little lighter just to have it contrast better with the roofs. But it's not really a major thing in this painting. It didn't really affect it or hurt it uh, too much, okay? Uh, so now, as I mentioned, I'm going to let the, the burnt sienna of the roofs to sort of merge and blend into the sky. Um, I, I saw Tim Wilmot. He has an amazing uh, watercolor channel, like exclusively watercolor and he he just does that thing that I did but he just does it so much better and I'm trying to learn how he does it he just lets everything really blend the initial wash he just puts the paint in there 
without worrying too much. Now you see I got this weird line, so I'm going to correct it. Um, you want to make sure just before the wash is dry to get the, the shapes correctly. So anyway, he does that thing with the whole um, letting the everything merge together on the initial wash, and then it picks it up on the second one, and it just looks phenomenal. I really still don't know how he does that, and I will link to his channel um, under the video, okay? Uh, just getting some of the walls of the buildings. I'm not trying to, again, get an initial uh, even wash as much. Um, I'm just trying to work it out section by section. Uh, an approach that can be dangerous once a wash dries. Um, honestly, I didn't know what would be a better way to approach this, so I just chose this one. Uh, excuse me. So, yeah, and I just I said I'll go with it and see how it works. A lot of it is just doing, um, like watercolor in general. It's just experiencing. You can't read about uh, you can't read about how to do push-ups. You have to actually do them. So same thing with uh, with with watercolor. You kind of have to do and make the mistakes yourself in order to learn. Okay, now you see I'm trying to vary the, the wash of the ground a little bit. I uh, started with a bit of yellow, then there's a very gentle touch of blue, and now I'm adding a little more blue just to the right area that's uh, more well shaded. And really, it all comes down to just doing a lot, you know. I learned a lot from uh, YouTube tutorials and videos, but the majority of my experience comes from this very same word, experience. You have to experience. Um, that's the tricky thing with, with watercolor and any more complex medium. Uh, you kind of have to experience doing it and, and failing at it and just learning what works well, what doesn't, what works well for you and what doesn't. Uh, so generally speaking, the right side, the right area is uh, more heavily, the, the value is darker. It's, it's just a darker area because this is the area of the buildings that's in the shadow. Okay, the light comes from the right here. And so you will see uh, the side, not this side, but this side on the right of the building um, is one that's more exposed to sunlight. This one I'm working on right now. Um, it's more exposed to sunlight, and so I'll keep it a little lighter, as you'll see in a few moments. But this one is really dark, I'm trying to get a little uh, bit of blue in it. Uh, let that wash dry. And now I'm coming back and starting to add some windows. Later on, I'll remember that the roof on this very same building is not dark enough and I'll come back with more burnt sienna and darken it. This is a mistake I should have avoided by making the initial wash darker and the sky maybe a little lighter. Um, also it's important to remember that a lot of these things correct themselves once you put in the next washes. So once I darken these uh, the undersides of the rooftops and all of that you'll kind of get a better feeling for the shapes of everything you're looking at. Right now it's really the the ugly stage of the of the painting and if you're go doing a good job it will just um, leave that ugly stage and will continue to be a beautiful painting but if you don't it, it will just stay ugly and it's okay it happens it happened to me so many times. Um, sometimes things look a little uh, detached from the scene. For example, the trees now are super light and they're really dark in the original reference as you'll see again in a few moments. By the way, the link to the reference in the description box. Um, so once from, from what I noticed, when something looks a little too detached from the scene, it usually means you need to darken it a little more. So if you look at all the, the trees now, they look a bit detached and it's because they're too light, they're too, uh, their value is too light. They need some darkening. Anyway, now darkening the sides of the houses uh, that are far from the, the sun. And you can see I leave this center section of the right side of the middle building uh, lighter because, again, it is exposed to some sunlight. Um, and once I'll put the shadows on the ground, you'll really get a better sense of the entire shape here. But I'm going to do that in just a moment. First, I'm going to add some... Um, high, uh, high contrasty shadows on that building, which will really help make the roof pop a little more, uh, will help put everything in its place. So even though I didn't get the value as accurate as I wanted to initially, the shadows do tend to correct many, many, many of these uh, sort of mistakes. Okay, now just a little more darker shadows in the windows themselves. 
um, under the windows, uh, just getting that uh, whole uh, impression of, of uh, the windows. I could definitely do a better job at it. Uh, it's something I'm uh, sometimes struggling with. <laughs> One more thing I noticed is, notice this, like the top shadows. This is a really cool part. So uh, it really makes the windows feel dented into the wall. Um, anyway, one thing I really uh, think I should be doing is start painting larger because I used a very small sheet of paper here and it just makes the texture be much more uh, significant because the painting, the scale is smaller. Once you go on a larger scale, the texture matters less to some degree. And right now it's really coming through. So it's great if you want to create an impression using uh, this texture such as snowy texture or uh, sometimes waves that are crashing against uh, rocks on the beach or in the ocean. Uh, but for this kind of really mechanical scene, you know, just a lot of structures, um, maybe it's better to work in a larger scale. It's just uh, easier once you get used to it. You have more, more control over the details. Uh, but anyway, you see how the shadows under the roofs really add uh, another dimension to it, really make it, make it uh, much clearer what the shape of the buildings are. So again, the, all of the foliage here was a bit detached. Now I will darken it significantly. Um, I noticed that usually trees and stuff like that tend to be really dark, like much more than you would expect, unless under very specific uh, lighting circumstances, uh, but for the most part they're really dark, uh, and this is no exception. Their green is usually very strong. Uh, one thing again that I could improve here is just, I used like sap green for the green here, I didn't mix my own green, and this was a mistake. So I could definitely uh, play around with some uh, new gamboge and French ultramarine, which some of you know is my favorite like go-to combination. Just let it mix on paper like the video I recently published on letting the paints mix on the paper. Or I'm not sure if it's still scheduled, sorry. I <laughs> just have so many uh, scheduled uh, videos so it's hard to follow. But anyway, um, I could definitely uh, do that. So that would um, just make it more interesting, you know. If you're just using the same uh, colors over and over and it's just a flat wash, it can get a little boring. So. Um, the thing that does redeem this painting in the end, uh, aside from the fact that I think it's pretty good, uh, but the thing that really redeems it is the shadows on the ground, which I will add in just a few moments uh, on the right, which are a major part of this scene. And I just got quite a few colors in them, so a bit of uh, burnt sienna, a bit of blue, um, just to make them a little more interesting. Now, a lot of people um, often say they just give the advice of making things a little warmer the closer they are to you, which is correct in terms of aerial perspective, um, but sometimes it can have exceptions. So I'm avoiding giving that advice like, uh, you know, vehemently, I guess, if that's the correct word. Um, so I'm trying to get a good balance here, okay? So I don't know if always, like, in any every situation the shadow is going to be warmer the closer it gets to us. You know, it could be, or not necessarily the shadows, but just the colors in general. You know, here I do it. I did, you see, I switched to burnt sienna. It's not dark enough. I think I'll go over it again. Um, but yeah, I try warming it up a bit you know, to, to make it feel a little closer, but I don't know if that's like necessarily a hard rule. Um, now you saw me just cleaning that edge of the sh shadow before it dries. It's really important to make sure. Because once it's dry, it's harder to correct the, the shape itself, okay? Uh, you'll find yourself uh, just glazing over it, and then you won't, you may not get uh, the same effect you're interested in, okay? So that's the, the plus with watercolor and the minus, you know? You, you can work at it as long as the wash is wet, but on the other hand, yeah, it's just a medium that has less control. So now this building felt a little flat, so I decided to add a bit of shadow to its side. Uh, the side that's, again, a little more obscure from the sunlight. Um, just felt it's correct to do that also for this building and probably for the building behind it as well. Uh, it was just the right decision to make the front sides of the, of the buildings pop a little more. I just didn't feel their depth enough, you know. And this comes also with darkening some of the shadows. Um, and I think this one really is over. Now I'm signing it, so, so I guess... Um, I'm done here. 
Um, just, I think I skipped something, but I, I may have darkened the roof on the left a bit. Uh, I'm not sure about that. And yeah, I'm adding a bit more. Like, I didn't feel it was complete. So sometimes, uh, even if you sign the, the painting, there's a little more work to do. But anyway, when you remove the tape, uh, you know it's really over. Here's again the original one. And then what I did. So uh, this is it. Let's wrap up this demo. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I know it was a full process and I had to really uh, run it at a fast speed just to make sure this video isn't super duper duper long. Um, so this is the final result, as you've seen. Uh, I hope you like it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, lovely, beautiful scene. Um, overall, I think I got kind of the result I saw in my mind's eye. I do have to admit, sometimes I kind of struggle uh, with <laughs> with some of the small details, especially in the areas that are farther away uh, from us, from the viewer. So this is something I'm still working on and kind of with the, with the cold pressed paper also, uh, due to the texture, it's not always easy to really do the straight lines and really get the fine details and it's a lot of a matter of uh, simpli uh, s simplifying things and this is something that all like you constantly learn new things and how to simplify and how to suggest something and um, I'm sure this can be done so much more efficiently uh, but this is where I'm at right now and I really hope you enjoyed this full process I will uh, see you again in another video really soon don't forget to follow me snapchat instagram and here on youtube I'll catch you later Thank you.